Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, I just want to thank you for tuning in and uh, being here to learn a little bit more about Emporia State University. Uh, we will hopefully give you guys a, a quick overview and um, kind of show you why um, a small, you know, relatively uh, regional institution here in the U.S. could be a, a great fit for many international students as they are looking at higher education here in the United States. Um, as you can see, we have our, our contact information here on the on the first page. If you need to email us, find us on social media. Uh, those are the, the addresses or the handles that you can find us at. Um, and we will jump in and get moving here. I can get my controls to go to the next slide. There we go. So I will start off with uh, just sharing about myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm the Director of International Admissions here at ESU. Um, I have been in this role for a little over five years now. Um, I've just had a, a ton of fun being able to work with international students, um, being able to um, travel the world and, and just meet great people from all over and um, you know, being able to help bring uh, students here to, uh, to the U.S. To, to study. It's just been very rewarding and, and a lot of fun. I, I greatly enjoy it. Um, and I will let my co-presenters, Laura and Manashi, um, introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. We're so glad you're here and you're joining us. Um, my name is Laura. I am from Colombia, and I'm currently a graduate student here at Emporia State. I'm doing my master's in informatics, and I'm also a graduate assistant for the Office of International Education. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our presentation. Um, my name is Manashi Manguendeza, and I'm from Harare, Zimbabwe. I'm also uh, a graduate student. I'm currently studying instructional design and technology. I will have one more semester left um, after this. Um, it's been a really, really fun uh, time, challenging, but overall just a, a great experience here at Emporia State. So yeah, I'm always happy to help. And if you ever in contact with me, I'm, I'm, always, I'm always here to support you, so yeah. Perfect. Thank you, guys. So uh, we do have some some Zoom poll questions that we're going to ask throughout the, the course of the presentation. Um, I do believe we have our, our first one ready that uh, Laura is going to throw up on the screen for us here. Yeah, this is an easy one, guys. All right. Which countries are we from? I'll leave it leave it open for a little bit so everyone can vote. Everyone's doing really well. You guys pay really good attention. Okay. You guys were 100% correct. 100%, well done. We got we have good students yeah. in today. <laughs> oh, very good. All, All right. right. Can you get it out of it? We'll get out of that and we will continue on here. All right. So Emporia State, where are we located? Well, we are located in the state of Kansas. Um, on our handy dandy map here to, to the right, um, you can see Kansas is highlighted uh, right there in yellow. Uh, we are located in the, the region that's called the Midwest, um, or you, you might hear it called the kind of the, the heartland uh, of the United States. A great way to describe it is to say that uh, if the you know if the U.S. was um, you know if you were playing darts you know throwing at a dartboard um, if you were to hit the bullseye um, you would hit Kansas. We are we are the the smack dab center of the of the country, so we like to say that we are really kind of the the heart of it all. Um, the the U.S. kind of springs from you know from where we're at there in the middle. Um, the great thing about Kansas is is because of our central location. You can get just about anywhere in the United States. Well, the you know contiguous 48. Um, you can get really anywhere in about a three-hour flight. Um, so rather than you know flying LA to, to New York City, which is maybe a five or six-hour flight to get across there, um, from us you can go west coast, east coast, north, south. I mean, you can get really just about anywhere in, in uh, not too long of a time. So uh, so it's really a nice location for students if they want to explore you know more of the U.S. and, and be able to to see a lot of the the country um, during their time here. Um, we are located in the city of Emporia, so our university takes its name from the, the, the community that we're located in. 
Uh, we're not a massive, uh, massive city by any means. Uh, as you can see, our, our community population is only about 40,000 people total. Uh, so it's a, you know, just a very nice, you know, kind of quaint family atmosphere uh, for students. Um, and really, when you when you come to Emporia, you, you're not just a student at the university, you really are a, a, a member of the overall community, um, and you're welcomed with with open arms. Um, and it's a, it's a really neat uh, opportunity for, for students to kind of experience that. Um, and you probably won't get that same type of experience by going to a massive, you know, metro area where there are, you know, millions of people. So being able to experience kind of that that friendly atmosphere, that that family type of of of, uh, of surroundings is, is really uh, uh, really neat. Um, I was going to say something else there, and I kind of lost my train of thought, but I will ask uh, Laura Manashi just to kind of chime in on what that has been like uh, for them coming from uh, very much larger cities um, in the countries that they are from, coming to a, a smaller community, and, and kind of what their experience has been with that. I think personally for me, I really appreciate the fact that when I first came as an exchange student, I was able to connect really easy with the community. And there's a, a place for you, regardless of where you come from. There's, I know that in my case, I'm Latina and there's a big Latino community here that only not just from international students because we have international students, Latino international students from all over Central and South America, but also here that are, you know, uh, American Latinos, uh, and they're all just so welcoming. They they make you feel at home, and that's been my experience so far. And it continues to be my experience that it lets you, you know, feel like you uh, are being taken care of. That people are looking out for you, they care for you, and that just lets you do a way better job, like academic wise. Right, uh, and if I can add on to that, like before I left home, I was very intimidating about uh, intimidated about coming to. A whole nother country and not knowing really what to expect but when i got to emporia um i was actually amazed by the welcome that i got and um just as brian has said like you are a member of the community and people um you know they look forward to meeting you and you can add to the community as well as uh you know receiving the you know the cultural experience so um overall um i've had a very positive experience uh, uh in emporia very good. Uh, and I remember what I was, was, was going to share is that despite being, uh, you know, a smaller community, uh, we're not too far from, from large metro areas um, here in Emporia. So uh, Kansas kind of has two large metro um, centers. Um, we have one called Kansas City um, and another one called Wichita. Uh, and Emporia is located right in the middle of those. Um, so you can get to either one of those in about an hour drive. Um, so we're not too far, but again, we, we have that, that small town, you know, kind of tight knit uh, community feel here. Um, one thing about the Midwest and especially in Kansas uh, is we have all the seasons here. Uh, so it's not, not going to be Florida where it's, uh, you know, beachy tropical all the time. And it's also not going to be uh, Minnesota where it's, you know, uh, nine months of winter uh, throughout the year. We, we definitely get all four uh, seasons and it, so it kind of breaks it up and really gives, uh, gives you the full, uh, full experience. Um, here's a picture of our campus uh, during the fall. Um, so we definitely have the you know, the very uh, pretty fall foliage um, with all the different colors, the, the golds and the, you know, the oranges and the browns. And it's, uh, it's a really pretty time um, on our campus. Uh, during the winter, you know, we get snow. Um, one thing about Kansas is we, we definitely get regular snows throughout the year, but rarely do we get, um, you know, tons and tons and tons of snow at, at one time. So you might have something like this where we get, you know, two, three, four inches of snow. It'll be around for a few days and then it warms up and it melts off and then you know we'll get another snow you know the next month as it, as it comes through so it's enough snow to, to you know let you really experience winter but not so much that uh, you get tired of it by uh, by the end of winter um and here we also have a, a just again highlighting the seasons uh, our mascot uh, so our, our mascot here at esu is uh, the hornets um, so you say we are the the emporia state hornets um, and our, our particular mascot is called corky um, and so the, the statues here or the, the guy on the right, that's our, uh, our, our Corky the Hornet uh, mascot. And again, it just kind of shows, you know, different seasons, you know, different, uh, uh, different types of weather that we do experience um, here at ESU. Laura, is this our, our next Zoom qu or poll question? Perfect. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's see how good everyone's memory is. What is the name of our mascot, everyone? Corky? Tommy, B, or Bob? Okay, we're getting mixed results. 
Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, a couple more seconds so everyone can participate. Okay. Overall, the great, the vast majority got it right. Congrats, guys. And I do, I can understand why some people would pick B because, you know, it looks like a B, but it's a hornet. Remember that it's a hornet, <laughs> not a B. And for those who don't know, a hornet is is kind of like a, a, a bee, similar to a bee or a wasp, um, but it's just uh, bigger um, and they're, you know, they're more, uh, you know, more fearsome. Um, your standard bee or, or wasp. Okay. Thank Good you, job on those questions. All right, so we will continue here looking at our university profile, um, just so you guys can get to know a little bit more about the, the institution itself. Uh, so we were founded in 1863. Uh, so we were the first public institution of higher education in the state of Kansas. Um, we were founded actually only um, a couple of, uh, of years after Kansas became a state. Uh, so uh, been around a long time doing education for uh, students in Kansas and you know throughout the world for, for a long time. And we just have a, a, a very proud history of, of being able to provide higher education um, here in Kansas. Our student population uh, is about 5,700 students total, um, and that's broken up between our undergraduate and graduate school populations. Here in the United States, that size is kind of considered a, a medium size institution. So one of the, the things about um, US higher ed that, that is an awesome thing for students is the um, just the, the breadth of choices uh, available for students to look at. So uh, we have very, very small schools. We have medium-sized schools. We have really, really huge schools. Um, we have private schools. We have public schools. You know, we have all of these different options that are really kind of there to, to suit, um, you know, suit whatever a student's desire is. Um, and so, you know, some students may really want that kind of small atmosphere. Some students may want the huge campus that's got 50,000 students on it. Um, and others may want kind of the, the best of both worlds um, there in the middle. And so that's kind of where we are um, here at ESU is, is being that kind of medium size. Um, we personally think it's really great because it's, it's big enough to provide lots and lots of opportunities for students. Uh, but it's not so big that you got to get lost in the shuffle um, with, with so many students walking around. Uh, so, you know, we think it's great and, and we encourage students to, to really kind of ask themselves, what do they want, what are they looking for in their university? Um, and if you are kind of that middle of the road, um, you know, type of person, then, um, you know, ESU would be a great, uh, a great place to look out for you. One of our goals as an institution is to be a, a global campus. Um, and what we mean by that is when students come to ESU, um, whether they are from here in Kansas, whether they're from somewhere else in the United States, or whether they're from a, a, another country in the world, uh, when they set foot on our campus that they really get to experience the globe. They get to make friends, you know, get to build understandings of, of culture um, and just all of those things that are, are very important as our, our globe shrinks, you know, every day uh, with travel, with the internet, with, with all of these things. So whoop, too far. Uh, so really that's our goal is to, to always have that, uh, have that global opportunity, that global environment for, for students to, to experience when they come here. So to that, we have over 400 uh, international students that represent over 60 countries uh, worldwide. So obviously Laura is from Colombia, uh, Manash is from Zimbabwe, and we have students from many, many countries uh, the world over um, here on our campus. So it's a, a really neat place to, to get to expand your boundaries and, and again, make friends and, and meet people from all over the world. Uh, lastly, we are considered a, a master's comprehensive university. Really what that means is we're focused on providing bachelor's and master's level programs for students. Um, we're not focused on, you know, constantly developing new doctoral programs or things like that. Uh, and what that really means, you know, for students is when they're looking at the, the undergraduate or even at the master's level, uh, it makes it a little bit easier um, to get time in, you know, research programs, uh, get time in labs with professors doing those, uh, those types of opportunities. Uh, because you don't have the, the doctoral students who there get first dibs on the professor's times, on the labs, um, all those things. So uh, for somebody who's maybe looking for those types of opportunities a little bit earlier in their, you know, their study career, uh, a master's comprehensive university is a, a, great, a great option to, to look at for that. Um, and I'll ask Manashi here to, to share a little bit just about um, his experience with our kind of medium size uh, institution and just kind of with our, our global campus uh, style of, of, of goal. Uh, right. So the medium size part, uh, I'll start with that. Um, what's really great, especially even in my undergraduate time, was that there's a good professor to student ratio. So actually the professor will know your name and actually know about you. You're not just like, a, you know, one off 
many in a class. So you can build uh, very strong relationships with your professors. And personally for me, that helped me excel with my education uh, because then I could you know, be in a position to understand um, a lot better. And then also being able to meet so many people from all over the world has been amazing. I don't think if I had stayed in my home, I'd have been um, you know, exposed to meeting so many different people. So um, it's something I take actually pride in to say that you know, I've got friends um, all over the world um, in many different countries. So, uh, you know, I always hope that if I'm stranded somewhere in the world, you know, there's somebody that I can, you know, I can call on and um, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty awesome feeling. Perfect, thanks. And we actually do have one, uh, one question that was posted in the, the Q&A that uh, we can go ahead and tackle. Uh, and the question was um, basically, are, are we welcoming to students from the Caribbean? Um, and that answer is uh, absolutely. Um, and we have uh, a long history of having students from uh, from the Bahamas, from Jamaica, from St. Kitts and Nevis, um, who have come and studied with us. And I'm sure there are others that I'm, I'm missing as well, but uh, absolutely. Um, our, our doors are open to, to students from every country, every region um, in the world. We're, we're genuinely glad to have, have everyone come study with us. So uh, very good question. Thanks for, for answering that or asking that. All right, moving forward here, just kind of want to showcase some of the, uh, you know, photos that you might experience with our, you know, with our campus as you're walking to class, you know, here's going to be maybe what, uh, what it looks like as you're, you know, going from your uh, nine o'clock class to your 10 o'clock class um, in the morning as you're, as you're going by, you're going to see um, you know, lots of students, lots of different uh, types of people walking around. And, and again, just a, a lot of different opportunities to, to meet people um, and expand your horizons. Uh, this is actually one of our professors in our School of Business. This is Dr. Joyce Zhou. Um, and so she's actually performing here in this photo at one of our uh, cultural festivals um, that we offer on campus. So um, we frequently will have um, talent shows, cultural you know, uh, festivals, things for students to, to come and, and showcase you know, their home country and culture and be able to, uh, again, share with our campus what, you know, what it's like in China, what it's like in Zimbabwe, what it's like you know, in, in wherever that student is from. So a uh, really great opportunity for students to uh, be able to um, do that and, and participate. Hola. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Ni hao. Salam. Annyeong. Privyet. Konnichiwa. Genki desu ka? Hello. Hey everyone, it's Gabriel Molina, and guess what? The nice weather is already here, spring break has passed, so what have our international students been up to? Well, for starters, people have been enjoying activities inside the university and around the university. Here, you will always find something to do. Some students have been visiting places close by, like Kansas City, or St. Louis, Missouri. But if you go a little bit farther, you'll eventually get to Chicago. It's a really popular destination for our students because it's a beautiful big city and it's close by. Now, if we go towards the East Coast, students have been visiting places like Boston, Washington DC, and New York. On the other side of the US, some people visited Hollywood, San Francisco, uh, some people went to Universal Studios, which is awesome, and then others went over to Las Vegas. The students who went to San Francisco went there for a business competition called the Hold Prize. Then going down south, Florida. And going down even farther, international students who work for the international office went to Guatemala and Bolivia. Emporia is in a great spot for you to travel around. There's some beautiful places around us, beautiful cities, and if you want to go farther, let's say east coast or west coast, you can do it easily. All right, so that was a, a, a cool little video there again, just kind of uh, showcasing, you know, maybe where some of our students travel to, kind of what you can experience while you're here. Um, and again, just showing, you know, that uh, central location that we have here in Kansas that allows our students to go, you know, really all over the place to, to see the U.S. or, um, or beyond. I think we can do a couple um, poll questions that I think will be, will test our attendees knowledge okay this one is pretty easy guys how many international students does emporia state university have we just mentioned this oh my gosh the first answers are like spot on you guys have been paying really close attention to us that makes me happy <laughs> okay these are like contrasting answers all right, um, most of you guys were correct. We have over 400 international students. 
which is amazing. And then I think we can do another one about our, the countries that are represented in our university. How many countries are represented? 60, over 60, over 10, over 20, or over 40? Whichever answer you guys think is most accurate. Everyone has been guessing spot on. While they're, while they're answering, I have to chime in the way we, the way we structured this you know, technically nobody is wrong because if you answered over 10. True. You know, it's yeah. over. The, it is over. <laughs> we should have put like around, you know, like the little <laughs> yeah. around symbol. You guys were pretty much 100% correct. Awesome. Yep. We have some good listeners today. Yeah. Group that I want to teach, man. You guys would, would kill the tests. <laughs> them out. We do great on Emporia State. Very good. All right, well, moving on here, we're going to jump into accolades and, and rankings. And I'm actually going to ask Manashi to share a little bit on this slide. Uh, okay, so with this with this slide, there are a few things that I, I do like to, to pay attention to. Uh, firstly, obviously, there's the best Midwestern university. We made that list, and that was according to the, you know, the US News and uh, World Report, as well as the Princeton Review. Uh, but the one that I like to point out the most is we were ranked 33rd, um, at, uh, you know, best U.S. university for awarding financial aid to international students. So, if I was applying and looking at inst an institution, I would definitely look at that. And just to put it into context, um, there are over 4,000 universities in in the United States. So, to come 33rd is actually a pretty huge deal. So. That is just definitely something that I would look into, especially if you're looking for funding opportunities, um, scholarships um, to, to help you um, on, on your way uh, um, with uh, your education. And then we do have uh, multiple accredi accreditations, uh, like the AACSB. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in accounting, so I went through the business school. And so basically, uh, the business school has that accreditation, and that's where I got my, my uh, my degree through. So yeah, there are a lot of uh, different things about Emporia State, but these are just like things that are uh, pretty awesome about us. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, just to point out that AACSB stands for the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. Um, and really what that is, is it's a uh, school business accreditation. It's the highest level accreditation that a school business can attain. Um, so much so that only 5% of the business schools in the entire world hold that accreditation. Um, and our school of business here at ESU is, is one of that 5%. So, uh, you know, if you go in with anything there, it's going to be very, very uh, high quality programs um, with really, really good uh, outcomes yeah. for, for you as a student. All right, next slide here, talking about safety. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Laura to share about this slide. Oh yeah, I think this is something really important and not just for the students, but I think more so for the parents because um, I speak for my, in my personal experience, my parents, um, you know, they're from Colombia and they really care about um, my well-being, especially because, you know, they, I'm in a different country, probably a country that a lot of our parents have never been to, a city that they've never been to. So it's understandable that they can be worried and concerned about our safety, which is why it's so reassuring to know that our city is one of the top 10 safest communities in the whole state of Kansas. And our campus is actually the number one safest campus in Kansas. So I think that's something that for parents is just really good to know because they know that they're like, we are gonna be safe. Um, we're not like here, it's a very different, I don't know how it is in everyone's country, but I know that back home, I, I don't know, it's very different from here. Like I can't be outside with my phone. I can't really, you know, like wear a lot of jewelry because you know, you don't want to really like draw too much attention to yourself. And here, like it's the complete opposite. If you go to the library and you leave your things, your laptop, um, while you do something else, while you go print, you go to the restroom, you can be like rest assured that your things are going to be there once you come back and nobody's going to take anything. Everyone here is really like respectful in that sense. And yeah, it's, it's a really good feeling to know that we're going to be safe here. 
Thank you. And on that, we actually have a question in the, the Q&A that was posted that actually kind of ties in with this a little bit. Um, and the question was asking if there were any um, like Asian hate cases or crimes, um, you know, against Asian students, you know, here in Emporia or in Kansas. Um, I can you know, definitely say in Emporia, no. Uh, in the entire state of Kansas, I, you know, I, I can't 100% say that there hasn't been any, but if there has been very, very, very few. Um, it's just not something that you really see a lot, you know, in in this area. Again, Kansas is is more of just that kind of, you know, family type atmosphere, um, and people are genuinely glad to have, you know, have internationals come and, and be a part of our, you know, our state and our communities here. So, you know, m you know, more often than not, you are always going to find, you know, people with with open arms welcoming you here and, and very glad to uh, to have you be a part of our community. So, uh, so I hope that answers answers that question there. All right, uh, moving forward. Oh, actually, there's one other question I wanted to address. Um, this is from uh, Faison Brown. Um, and he asks, he, he says he's currently pursuing his bachelor's degree in law. Um, after my bachelor's, what can I pursue at Emporia? Um, and we're actually going to get to um, some of the degree options that we have available um, here in a couple slides. So um, sit tight and we'll, we'll get to that um, here in, in, in just a minute. All right. so. Our next slide, uh, just a picture here again, just kind of highlighting how our international students can go out and, and be a part of our community. Um, this is a picture of our uh, homecoming parade um, that we have uh, every fall. Um, you can see our, our international students, whether they be, you know, Asian, whether they be uh, Arab, you know, African, whatever it is, they can they can dress in their natural dress and they can loudly and proudly, you know, share what country they're from and what their culture is um, and and not only feel safe with it, but know that they're going to be, you know, celebrated and applauded for uh, you know, for, for having that and for being here um, in, in, in Emporia. So again, it's just a very safe, welcoming community for, for, for all people, um, regardless of, of who you are or where you come from. All right, so as promised, degree programs. So this is our uh, undergraduate uh, degree programs that we have uh, offered here at ESU. Um, on the left hand side is going to be our major programs that we offer and then on the right hand column is our minors um, and pre professional programs so uh, we have a, a very wide breadth uh, of study for students to be able to kind of mix and match um, and really do whatever you want. Um, and that's one of the great things about higher education in the US is you know you can really tailor your studies to what you want to do. Uh, so for instance, if you want to say you, you really have you know lots of interests in two different areas. You, you have business you, you want to study, but you also want to do uh, art, for instance, right? Well, you can mix and match those. You could do a, a major in business and you could do a minor degree uh, in art at the same time. However, if you really wanted to pursue both for a full course of study, you can double major. Um, you can do a double major in business and art at the same time. So that's one of the, the awesome things is you can really pick and choose and, and tailor your education to, to what you want it to be uh, while you're studying. Um, uh, Manashi, do you have anything to share as far as like the undergraduate, you know, programs um, and, and kind of that experience? Yeah, I mean, I can just add on to what you said, like, you know, the U.S. education is, uh, system is very flexible. And that's something that I was never exposed to in my home country. So I just thought maybe when you come here, you can just focus on one thing. But in actual fact, you can do uh, multiple things. So, uh, you know, I have friends that have double majored. I've, I myself picked up a major and I had a minor, um, you know, so. There are many different things that you can do with, with your undergraduate career here. And um, so, yeah, I would recommend it. Perfect. We had another uh, question pop up in the, the Q&A. It says, is physical education an option? Uh, absolutely. So if you look uh, over here on our left-hand side on the majors, um, we have several different areas, actually, that could kind of go into that. We have health and human performance uh, as a degree. Uh, scanning down here, uh, down to the P's, you'll see we have physical education um, as part of our teaching options uh, as well there. So, so lots of different options for, you know, for students who are interested in those, those types of areas um, in order to study. So absolutely great question. That was from uh, Marissa. Uh, so thank you, Marissa, for, for asking that. All right, so that's again our undergraduate program. So that's going to be the, the bachelor's degree level um, type studies. Moving on to our next slide, we're going to look at some, not all, some of our, our popular graduate degree programs um, that we have available. Uh, and again, a very wide, you know, wide array of programs available. You know, you could study uh, business and get your MBA. You can do a uh, master's in athletic training. Again, if you, you know, for Marissa, who was looking at, at physical education, maybe you go on and do, uh, do a master's in athletic training. 
Um, you know, we also have lots of psychology and counseling options that students can do. Uh, forensic science. Uh, Laura is studying uh, informatics with a concentration in quantitative econ. Uh, a bunch of stuff that I don't understand, but she's way smarter than me. Uh, so just lots of lots of different options uh, for students to, to look at studying. Um, and back to the, the question about um, studying law and what, you know, what could be an option to, to look at at the graduate level. Um, it really depends on what your career goals are. Um, so if you want to stay in the, the field of, of law and, and go that route, um, then you could definitely look for those options in the U.S. Uh, we at issue don't have a, a law school, unfortunately, so we wouldn't be able to, to provide that. Uh, but you don't have to stay in that realm. You could finish your bachelor's degree in law and look at doing something different. You could look at uh, applying to an MBA program um, and kind of diversify your educational experience a little bit um, that route. So, uh, so there's, again, lots of different options available. Uh, Laura, since I, I singled you out with the, the informatics and, and econ, if you just want to sh quickly share kind of what that looks like and, and what being a, a graduate uh, student here at ESU kind of entails. Oh yeah, I definitely, I can say that I am in love with my graduate program. I think I made the best decision that I could have made, like choosing it specifically because it's very, um, it's tailored to what I want to do, which is go on to get my PhD. So this is a very like research intensive program that um, allows you to, you know, prepare um, to move on to like a PhD. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I just finished my first year and I'm very happy with it. I'm happy with what I've learned. And I feel like I'm really prepared to go on to apply next fall to get my doctorate. So yeah, I just, you know, this is the, the perfect example that what Brian was saying that here they, the professors give you a lot of attention when it comes to research, because we don't have to compete with the PhD students who usually take on all of the attention from the professors, but here us master's students are the ones who get all the attention. So that is really great. Great, thank you. Uh, are we due for a, a Zoom poll question or are we good to continue? Yeah. Yeah, we love questions. Um, let's see. Oh, this one is a very important one. What's our nationwide, nationwide ranking regarding generosity for international student aid? This is very important for all of our international students to know because it's something that we all care about <laughs> and our parents care about. You guys are doing great. And yeah, just like. Yeah, very good guys. We, we again, we're ranked 33rd in the, in the US for providing financial aid. And we will actually get to that uh, here in just about two more slides, I think, to really go into more details on that front. Yep. So great job there. Okay, on this side, uh, just real quick, want to touch on uh, admission requirements. Um, so if you're looking to apply to an undergraduate program, um, you're going to need a, a bare minimum 2.5 cumulative high school GPA. Uh, that is going to be a, a US um, standard 4.0 scale. If you're in a country where that's not the scale or the grading style that you use, don't worry. That's not something that you have to calculate on your own. Uh, if you're unsure, you know, of, of where you're at or, or whether you're admissible, um, just email us, um, and we can do a we can do a conversion of your 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 grades and, and tell you what your GPA is um, for you to let you know. So. So no worries there if, if you're not familiar with, with that um, scale, um, but that's going to be the baseline GPA that we're looking at. Uh, SAT or ACT test scores um, are preferred, they're not required. Um, the reason we say they're preferred is because you can actually earn more scholarship money um, with a, a good score on one of those tests. So that's always good. So we encourage students to, to look at taking one of those if you can. If you can't, not a big deal, not required to be admitted. And then outside of that, we really just want to look for proven work ethic and whether you're going to be a, a, somebody who's going to come and, and share your home country and culture um, on our campus. Uh, so we have a, a recommendation process that we can use with, with teachers or Education USA uh, to look at those, uh, those pieces. Um, and again, we just want to make sure that you're going to contribute to that, that global campus environment that, that we've stated before is our, our goal here. Uh, for graduate programs, I wish I could say uh, more details on this, but really the, the answer is it require the requirements vary by program. So uh, graduate school programs can kind of set their own, you know, their own requirements program by program. So uh, what it takes to get into Laura's program is not the same that requires um, like from a national's program versus something else, right? So uh, you kind of have to just do your research and, and find the program and really look at it uh, or contact us here in the international office with questions um, and we can obviously point you 
you in the right direction to, to find the information that you need. But in general, we would say uh, to be admitted to a graduate program, really you want to be a, a minimum 3.25 uh, undergraduate GPA to really be a, a competitive and, and serious uh, candidate for uh, for admission. So again, not don't want to go into too much detail there, but that's going to give you guys a, a baseline um, idea of what, what you would be looking at. Okay. On our next uh, slide here is our scholarships and, and funding slide. Um, and again, we're, we're reinforcing the fact that um, of all the US universities, um, and just to point out, I, a lot of international students aren't aware of this, uh, in the United States, there are over 4,500 colleges and universities. Uh, so there are a lot, a lot of options available, a lot of schools. Um, and so for us to be number 33 of that 4,500, um, we are, are really, really proud of that fact. And, and we're proud to be able to offer accessible education to, to our international students um, to come here. Um, one of the great options that we have to really kind of be that first step in, in getting, you know, getting students a, a much more accessible rate um, is going to be what's called our diversity award. Um, as you can see here, both undergraduate and graduate students are eligible um, for this award. Um, and what it does is it provides a 55% tuition waiver for undergraduate students and a 50% tuition waiver for graduate students. The other great thing is you will keep it for the entirety of your studies. Um, so if you apply to ESU as a freshman um, and you are awarded the diversity award, you will have it for all the years of your bachelor's studies. And then if you decide to stay at ESU and pursue a master's program, you will even keep it through your master's program. So as long as you are you know, maintaining your, you know, your status as a good standing student here at ESU, you maintain this, uh, this tuition waiver all the way out. And again, it, it's really a, a huge first step in just bringing those costs down um, to a, a much more affordable rate. And then on top of that, you can earn other scholarships. Right? So um, as if you're coming in um, as a freshman or a transfer scholarship at the under, uh, transfer student at the undergraduate level, um, you can earn anywhere from 1000 up to almost $4,000 uh, additionally per year um, based on your grades or, or test scores. Um, depending on what you want to study or specific talents that you might have, you can earn more money on top of that. So what we do is we, we try to mix and match and get you as many scholarships, awards, waivers that we can possibly get you to make the cost as affordable as, as we can possibly make it. So that's really our goal. Um, and in doing so, that's kind of how we have uh, gotten that ranking as the, the number 33rd uh, for providing financial awards because we want to give you as much as we can give you. We don't limit students to just one option. Um, real quickly on the graduate student side, uh, graduate assistantships are a, a great way uh, for students who are looking for, um, you know, what we'd say full funding uh, type options. Um, and Laura, if you'll quickly just kind of share what, uh, what a GA entails and, and what it gets you as a student. Um, well, Monashi and I are graduate assistants for the Office of International Education and every single department on campus um, has graduate assistants. So what that means is that we get our full tuition that does not include fees. So, but the tuition is the biggest portion of like what that would cost. We get our full tuition covered and we get like a salary um, along with that. And then in our case, it covers like two thirds of our international student insurance. So that is, that leaves very little for us to cover. So that really helps with like living expenses to help pay like, you know, the re remainder of our fees. And it's a really great opportunity to also, you know, get some work experience on your resume. Perfect, thank you. And we do have one uh, question in the Q&A from uh, Jim C. Uh, Jim C asked if we have any fully funded scholarships for undergraduate international students. Uh, we do. Um, there are a couple of options there that students can apply for, um, and we will actually highlight one of our international students who has received this um, here in the next uh, couple of slides. Um, it's a little bit difficult for students to earn this scholarship um, without having been at ESU first. So I would say you, you have uh, at the undergraduate level, you have a better chance of earning those after you've uh, started ESU and studied for a year um, and then apply for those. Um, you have a much higher, uh, higher chance of, of earning the, um, you know, one of those fully funded scholarships um, that route um, than if you're just applying for it without ever having studied here. So just being uh, fully, you know, fully open about that, that that's going to be your best bet. So we do, but a little bit of a, a caveat to it. Okay, uh, we are, are going to, I want to say rush, but we're going to go quickly through our, our remaining slides here because we've only got about um, six, seven more minutes left of our presentation. Um, just to give you guys a, a quick rundown of the estimated costs, um, on the left-hand side here is our undergraduate costs, right, set, right side is going to be our, our graduate costs, so it's going to be one-year estimates. You can see the, the non-resident 
columns in there are going to be much higher on the tuition and fees. Um, that's going to be what you would pay if you didn't have any you know, funding, any awards, anything like that. You know how we mentioned that diversity award gives you that 50 to 55% tuition waiver uh, right off. Uh, on the right side, um, you will see is what the price comes down to once you've earned that diversity award. So as an undergraduate student, instead of paying $21,000 per year baseline on your tuition and fees, it comes down to about 9,600. Likewise, graduate students come down from almost 17,000 to right at $9,000. Um, so that's gonna be your baseline. And then again, you can continue to uh, tack on other scholarships on top of that to continue to bring those costs down um, even lower. So uh, it's a great way to, again, have a much more affordable, I would say on average, our international students are probably looking at for their tuition fees, their living expenses, their insurance, their books, all of that. I would say, you know, undergraduates probably on average going to be looking at paying, you know, maybe 15 to $19,000, you know, per year um, out of pocket, um, if I had to give a, an estimate, you know, range for all of our students. So Comparatively speaking to a lot of places and a lot of universities in the US that's uh, highly accessible and, and uh, you know, much more affordable for, uh, for a lot of students. All right. Looking at um, what your investment is going to get you um, here at ESU. So you want to kind of know, hey, I'm going to invest time, I'm going to invest money. What's that going to get me? Well, here at ESU, we have a 98% placement rate. So students who earn their bachelor's degree um, either have a job in their field or move on to uh, graduate school studies within their field within six months of being able to, or six months of earning their degree. So uh, we have a, a lot of pride in, in helping students get where they want to go on their educational and career path. Um, highlighting real quick here, one of our, our, our recent success stories, uh, Martin Okonkwo is from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, he came here to, to ESU, studied a, a dual master's program in MBA in uh, information technology. Um, he was awarded a, a graduate assistantship from our School of Business. Um, and after he graduated, he uh, is using his uh, OPT. Um, he has a STEM OPT, so he can work in the United States for three years. I mean, he is doing that right now to work for Geico Insurance um, in Washington, D.C. So doing some really, really cool stuff. Um, and Martin's pretty awesome. Uh, Paula um, is a student who I mentioned just a second ago that has, uh, that earned one of our, our full ride scholarships. Um, that was the Inley uh, Memorial Scholarship that she won um, in 2019-2020. Uh, Paula actually works as a student assistant for us here in the, in the OIE and she's, uh, she's great. Um, she's actually studying abroad in Germany this summer doing um, very specialized uh, research in physics with uh, one of our partner institutions in Germany. So really cool stuff, really awesome opportunities for, for students um, here at ESU. And then we have a quick video from Martin here. Hi, my name is Ifai Martin Okonkwo, and I am an alum of Emporia State University. While at ESU, I studied information technology and business administration. Emporia State University empowered me in so many ways. One is the sense of belonging and community. Emporia State has over 130 organizations that students across the campus can join. I was a member of some of these organizations, especially in the School of Business. This helped me connect with my fellow students outside the classroom and also an opportunity for me to build my leadership experience, all while contributing to our community as a whole. I'm glad I took advantage of these opportunities because it helped shape the person I am today. Um, Thank you. Hi. Okay, real quickly, just want to highlight what some of our graduates and alumni are, are doing currently. Um, jobs, they are faculty members at different U.S. institutions, um, managers at you know, places like Alibaba, directors um, at places like World, uh, at the World Bank, um, country ministers of finance. So we have students who go on to do some really, really awesome things. We have students who are studying doctorates at you know, highly ranked um, institutions such as University of Washington, um, KU Med, uh, St. Louis University, places like that. Um, and students who are doing postdoc programs at Yale School of Medicine, Washington University of St. Louis, Northwestern. So um, ESU can really be a springboard to help students get to you know, higher level programs at very prestigious institutions here in the US. All right, real quickly here, I just want to ask Manashi to very quickly touch on just kind of experience, student experience, um, and, and what it's like being a student here at campus. Right, so just like uh, from Martin's video over there, um, there are many uh, different organizations that are available for students, uh, regardless of what your interests may be. Um, so basically, we encourage it, Emporia State is encouraged to, you know, explore outside the classroom. 
um, find what interests you, get involved in leadership roles, um, grow as an individual. So uh, that's just something that's highly encouraged as well as earning your degree so that when you finally uh, graduate, you, you're a more uh, well-rounded individual, essentially. Yeah, and as, as Matt, she's talking there, I'm just showing a couple of pictures of, of opportunities on campus for things for students to participate in and be involved in and go to athletic events, uh, particular fireworks shows, all sorts of all sorts of fun stuff going on on campus. I'm from Egypt. I traveled over 6,700 miles. I'm from Estonia. I'm from Iran. I'm from South Korea. I'm from Mali. I'm from France. I'm from Syria. I'm from Tunisia and I traveled 5,400 miles. I come from China. I'm from Finland. I'm from Saudi Arabia and I traveled almost 7,500 miles from home to become a hornet. I personally love that video because it's just short, snappy, but it, it showcases our, our student diversity and really kind of what we're about um, here at ESU. And, and again, just opening our doors to, to students from all over the world. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch here. We've only got a couple minutes left. So if anyone has questions that they want us to answer before we're done, go ahead and throw those in the Q&A here as we're hitting these last couple slides and we'll be sure to get those answered before we're done. Um, so lastly, I'd just like to share with students kind of what our uh, what our vision um, as a university is here at ESU. Um, and that vision is, is right here. We are the, the school of blank. Um, and I know it probably looks like I was working a little too fast, um, you know, just didn't uh, get, you know, get this slide finished in time. But no, uh, it, it's school of blank and it's it's left blank on purpose. And it's it's on purpose because we don't want to answer what we will be for you as a student. Uh, we want you as a student to be able to come to ESU and make ESU what you need it to be for you. Uh, so for instance, uh, it could be the, the school of surprises around every corner. Um, this is a photo from one of our on-campus theater productions. Uh, it could be the, the school of, of getting out of class, uh, except this is a class. This is one of our uh, study abroad classes that went to the Bahamas to do hands-on marine biology research. It could be the, the school of never a dull moment. Um, as uh, Manashi shared, there's always something going on on campus. There's always a way to get involved and, and just have, you know, have the time of your life um, while you're here at ESU. And then lastly, as our presentation is called, we are the, the school of everything is possible. Um, and we really believe that we can be that for students that you can you can come here to, to ESU, you can come to this, you know, kind of smaller regional institution here in Kansas and really make your dreams a reality. Um, reach out, kind of take your future by by the hands and, and bring it in and, and make it a reality in your life. So again, that's our goal. That's what we're about. That's what we want to do for for you guys as students. Um, and uh, we really hope that we get the chance to uh, see some of you guys. Uh, here on campus at, at some point in the future. So that's all we have uh, presentation wise. Really appreciate your attention and, and listening to us uh, drone on here for 45 minutes. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like we have uh, one last question. Uh, it says, is it hard to get accepted at the school? Um, I would say um, it, it, it's kind of a, a, a take it with a grain of salt type of a question because um, if you meet the requirements, um, no, I would say it's, it's not hard to, to get accepted per se, uh, but it depends on, on your level. Um, graduate school is always going to be a little bit you know, harder to get into than maybe an undergraduate program is. So it, it just depends. It depends on what you're studying, um, what your level is, and again, what, um, I guess what your, your academic background is. But in general, I would say um, you know, we're, not, we're not easy to get into, but we're not you know, um, impossible to get into either. So I'd say we're, we're a good middle of the road, uh, like our size. Um, does anyone have any last questions that we can tackle uh, for you before we finish up here? Like I saw, I don't, do we have any more Zoom poll questions that we need to ask? I think we covered basics. <laughs> Got it all. Okay, good. Good. We have a, another question that came in. How can we pay the, the tuition fee? Um, I'm not sure if that is meant more towards like what are the the modes of payment or what. So I'll kind of address it in a couple of ways. Uh, so students can pay pay like via variety of, of modes. You can pay in cash or check. Um, you can pay online with a credit card. Um, you can even do a wire transfer like from your bank at, in your home country and, and pay that way. So um, really any way um, you know that you want to get the funds uh, to us is 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 how you can do it. On another side, as far as like how are the charges. 
um, and how can you pay those? So you were only billed by semester, right? So we were showing you guys uh, costs for an entire year earlier, uh, but really you're only billed by semester. So if you were to start for a fall term, you're only gonna have charges for that fall term that you have to pay right there, right? Um, and then you can pay that all at once, or you can make break it down into monthly payments. So we have a, a payment plan you can enroll in and just break that, that balance down and pay it off. Um, in monthly installments. So uh, we try to be flexible and, and really kind of meet students um, where they are and, and uh, make it, make it a, as easy as possible for everybody. All right, if there are no final questions, um, again, we just want to thank you all for, for tuning in um, and we really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much uh, to everyone at Emporia State University. This has been such a great presentation and I'm sure everyone learned a lot. Um, if you have any more questions uh, for the team, you can check out their booth over in the exhibit hall. Uh, and we have another uh, hour and 10 minutes or so uh, for, for all that fun stuff. So thank you so much again. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.